Oh, para oh. makashare siya um, ng opinion. Dun, dun, dun sa, sa participants. Zoom, sa participants, okay. And then, and make, then co- guys, make co-host, okay. Oo. Oh, oh. okay. Ayan, sorry, sorry. Hindi ko na alam. Ayan. Okay. okay. Ayan. There you go. So, Miko? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so again, uh, good morning, ma'am, sirs. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. The, the title of my uh, presentation is The Security Pursuits of a Small State, a Comparative Study of uh, the Philippines Security Partnerships with uh, Australia, Japan, and Vietnam 2010 to 2016. So uh, now shown on the screen is the outline of my presentation. After a brief introduction and an overview of the RRL and methodology, I shall uh, proceed with the data presentation chapters, uh, data presentation and analysis chapters, and thereafter uh, the key findings and uh, recommendations. So uh, in his seminal work, Theory of International Politics, Kenneth Waltz pointed out that states in response to security challenges face or pursue two major courses of action. One is internal balancing, which refers to the enhancement of military and economic capabilities. And the other is external balancing, which refers to the pursuit of, uh, of uh, alliances. However, security cooperation, cooperation between and among states is not limited to alliances. There are other forms such as uh, security communities, you have coalitions, and then we have strategic partnership, which is a relatively new concept in the field of IR. And uh, as was pointed out earlier, uh, much of the works on this realm has focused on the strategic partnerships of major powers. Uh, little attention has been given to the pursuit of strategic partnerships by small powers. So it is in this context that uh, uh, this study is situated. Uh, with that in mind, the main research problem is under what conditions do small states undertake strategic partnerships with other states? Specifically, how does the Philippines under the Aquino III administration perceive its strategic challenges as a small power? What are the factors that influence the Philippines in selecting potential strategic partners? And what are the factors that determine the choice of states to forge specific partnership types? Now, the research objectives are as follows, uh, to increase understanding on the strategic behavior of a small state, uh, to contribute to the strategic partnership academic literature, to provide uh, possible policy inputs to the defense and security establishment of the Philippines, and to provide historical analysis of the foreign and security policies of the Aquino government. Uh, the scope of this uh, presentation is the Aquino administration 2010 to 2016, focusing only on the security, security dimensions of the, of the strategic partnerships. It does not cover in depth uh, relations with international organizations, although uh, references will be made with, with respect to ASEAN as well as the Philippines US alliance. And it is not a purely diplomatic history, but rather an analysis of the, of, of the conditions that led to the pursuit of strategic partnerships by the Philippines. Now, the study is significant because, as I've mentioned, it is a rel- uh, strategic partnership is a relatively new concept in the field of IR, and uh, examining the, the concept using the Philippine case might offer some modest conceptual clarification. The topic is still, uh, is still very much relevant in the sense that uh, security partnership agreements are still in effect, and also uh, beyond that, it offers potential significance because by examining these conditions, it might point out to the... Uh, underlying diplomatic imperatives of why the Philippines need to pursue security relations with other states. So the, the theory of, uh, that, I, uh, that I adopted for this uh, paper is essentially an amalgamation of the theory of small state behavior by uh, Mike, uh, Michael McCammit with that of the strategic partnership framework of I'm sorry, a strategic partnership framework of uh, Thomas Wilkins. Now, in his theory of small state behavior, uh, Mr. McCammit pointed out that a small state's uh, behavior are guided by uh, four key characteristics. One is limited capabilities, tendency to, pro- uh, to support the current international order, working within the framework of international law and organizations, and uh, tendency to, uh, to have uh, high levels of paranoia, meaning viewing international relations as, uh, as an activity that brings more risks rather than opportunities. And cognizant of that uh, context, small states uh, forge a strategic partnership with another state because of the uncertainty of the international environment and what Wilkins called strategic fit, which is essentially the, uh, 
uh, convergence of, of uh, strategic interests between two states. And strategic partnership evolves in three phases of uh, formation, implementation, and evaluation. The, the evaluation portion is not a uh, part of this uh, current study. Now, just a uh, brief overview of the RRL. Uh, there is no single definition of what small state or small power, which is uh, used interchangeably throughout the literature. Uh, and the common theme, nonetheless, is its relative weakness vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the other states in the or other powers in the region. Now, there are different forms of security cooperation. Alliance is more of a, of a legally binding type of arrangement founded on, in a, on a bilateral treaty. Coalitions are more of... Uh, of uh, ad hoc arrangements, security community, uh, which is underpinned by a common identity uh, such as the EU, and then you have strategic partnership, which is uh, relatively uh, less formal and uh, low commitment costs and essentially a structured collaboration uh, between states or other actors in order to take advantage of economic opportunity opportunities or address security challenges. Now, the different schools of thought of IR have different perspectives on strategic partnership. Realists would argue that it is basically driven by shared security concerns. Uh, the liberal institutionalists would argue that strategic partnership is formed after a period of um, cooperation on functional areas uh, or those uh, less uh, controversial areas. Constructivists, on the other hand, that this is driven by the need to promote the norms and values. And as I have pointed out earlier, um, much of the literature has thus far uh, focused on, uh, on uh, major powers. So uh, briefly on the methodology and research design, I used a qualitative methodology and uh, most different comparative case study uh, design uh, because the three cases all resulted to security partnerships, the methods of data collection, uh, I reviewed uh, primarily the strategic partnership declarations of the of the three countries, uh, related defense and security uh, agreements, uh, press releases, news articles, journal articles, and so on. And I also conducted key informant interviews. And uh, I was fortunate enough to be granted an audience with the former Secretary of National Defense, uh, Lieutenant General Voltaire Gasmin, uh, the former Chief of Staff of the AFP, General Emmanuel Bautista, and uh, officials from the Department of Foreign Affairs and the National Security Council. Now, uh, when the administ Aquino administration came to power in 2010, it identified uh, major power competition, particularly between the United States and China as one of the key challenges facing uh, the Philippines. And uh, the South China Sea was viewed from that context, which is essentially as an area of competition between the United States and China. And, uh, and uh, China essentially nearly claims the entire South China Sea with its expansive nine dash line claim. Now that body of water and arguably the uh, uh, greater or broader Western Pacific has been, an, has been the region in which the United States has exercised geopolitical preeminence since the end of World War II. From the perspective of the Philippines, uh, China's excessive claims uh, significantly overlaps with its own maritime and territorial claims. Now, Major power competition and South China Sea dispute amplified uh, the Philippine sense of vulnerability as a small power in four ways. First, it, it, it uh, definitely underscored its limited capabilities as a small power, particularly during the Scarborough Shoal dispute. Second, the Philippines became more vocal in expressing its support for uh, US presence. It supported President Obama's uh, rebalance to Asia. And in 2014, uh, the country signed the Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement with Washington in order to facilitate the rebalance. Uh, third, the administration also utilized international law and organizations. We filed an arbitration case against, against China in 2013. Uh, we, we tried to persuade ASEAN to adopt certain initiatives to manage the South China Sea disputes, such as the, uh, the uh, transformation of the South China Sea into a zone of peace, freedom, friendship, and cooperation, and as well as the Triple Action Plan. And, uh, uh, and also asked ASEAN to to uh, issue stronger statements on the South China Sea. And in 2012, uh, because of this issue for the first time in its history, the ASEAN foreign ministers failed to issue a joint communique. And it was also during this period that uh, the Philippines uh, appeared to be uh, became more paranoid with its uh, security, in, uh, particularly in two ways. One, because of what was happening in the South China Sea is with uh, the, Philippine, uh, the Philippine Congress enacted a revised AFP modernization uh, law the same year the Scarborough Shoal incident happened. And uh, we, this essentially ex extended the original AFP modernization program for another 15 years. And although the defense budget increased, some equipment were and assets were acquired, uh, it is highly unlikely that 
uh, these initiatives would have made immediate significant impact on the dynamics in the South China Sea. And therefore, the Philippines, under the Aquino administration, asked the United States to give clear-cut security guarantees that it would come to its aid in the event of unarmed conflict. Uh, however, by the time the administration left uh, office in 2016, uh, no such uh, security guarantees were, were given. Now, what I tried to do in this uh, paper is to compare the three uh, partnership agreements on three fronts, the principles and interests articulated, the areas of cooperation, and the mechanisms for implementation. I tried to compare them uh, within the context of, uh, of, the, uh, of the Philippines' vulnerabilities as a small power in order to, to uh, understand the underlying themes that the Philippines as a small power has in, uh, uh, in understanding the conditions that led to the strategic partnerships. So uh, now when uh, the government, uh, the Aquino administration came in in 2010, it issued the NSP uh, national security policy the following year, which provided the guidance for uh, uh, the government to pursue strategic partnerships. And although there, has, there was no Aquino era publicly released document or pronouncement that explains in great detail of what a strategic partnership is, uh, there are nevertheless some elements on how the administration viewed uh, what on how the administration viewed a strategic partnership is. First, uh, it viewed it as a form of security cooperation, something short of a formal military alliance. Second, it is informal in the sense that it is established through through joint declarations among leaders or ministers. And uh, third, it uh, there is no legal commitment to defend each other in the event of unarmed conflict. Now, whether or not they will come to each other's aid in the event of unarmed aggression remains an open question. Nonetheless, uh, the strategic partnership becomes the overall uh, framework of bilateral uh, cooperation. So there appears to be certain parameters that the Philippines has um, under, uh, that, uh, uh, undertook in order to determine the strategic partners. One is if there is a convergence of interest, uh, which is what Wilkins called strategic fit and uh, uh, geographic location. As uh, Secretary Gazmin uh, emphasized in my interview, he, he noted that uh, the Philippines uh, chose partners that are likewise in the similar uh, uh, geopolitical environment. So you have uh, Japan, uh, Vietnam, and uh, Australia. So reviewing this uh, documents, uh, the declarations uh, in light of the Philippines' vulnerabilities. I, I think uh, a careful examination would point out there are, there are three underlying themes that would point out why the Philippines, or the conditions rather, of why the Philippines forged strategic partnerships with other states. So, so first, the imperative to support the current international order. Second is the necessity to uh, uh, promote capacity building efforts. And lastly, the need to support and enhance existing multilateral architecture. So with those three themes in mind, now please allow me now to, uh, uh, to, to discuss the three cases. So the 2011-2015 Strategic Partnership Declarations enhanced uh, Philippines-Japan security relations. Now these declarations, as well as other policy documents and pronouncements from both uh, Manila and Tokyo, uh, emphasize the need to support the current international order. For the Philippines, such order is being undermined by an increasingly assertive China. Uh, particularly with its actions in the South China Sea, and Japan expressed a similar concern. Now, China's actions in the South China Sea must be viewed from a broader context. Uh, in 1982, China's Navy unveiled its vision of, uh, of uh, dominating the Western Pacific by ex exercising preeminence in the first and second island chain. Now, incidentally, the Philippines and Japan are part of that first island chain. And from Japan's perspective, if, if uh, China successfully dominates the South China Sea, it would have the capability to, to uh, strangle Japan's economy and uh, affect its security because it is heavily reliant on sea lines of communication as a maritime and archipelagic country like the Philippines. And so therefore Japan and the Philippines underscore the need uh, to uh, ensure freedom of navigation and overflight uh, in the South China Sea or in Tokyo's spar lands, the so-called open and stable seas. And in the same vein, the two countries also reaffirm their support for US-led system of alliances and partnerships of which they are part. Now, the second condition essentially, essentially is an operationalization of the first one, the promotion of uh, capacity building efforts. Japan provided the Philippines with 10 multi-role response vessels for our Coast Guard. It uh, provided training aircraft for our Navy and uh, initiated training activities and exercises under the Memorandum of Understanding and Defense Cooperation. And uh, since 2012, Japan has been a uh, 
regular uh, participant of the Philippines U.S. Palikaton exercises as an observer. Now, uh, the third condition is supporting and en enhancing existing multilateral architecture, particularly the ASEAN-led uh, platforms. Now, ASEAN uh, at present is at, this, is at the center of this multilateral architecture, but this is in no small part due to the tacit license provided by the major powers, as other scholars have argued. Uh, this is essentially a default position because of the lack of strategic trust among the major powers. Nonetheless, since ASEAN does occupy that central role, Japan and the Philippines, which is a founding member of ASEAN, uh, expressed its support for for ASEAN and its uh, and ASEAN-led platforms such as the ADMM or the ASEAN Defense Ministers Meeting, ASEAN Regional Forum, and the East Asia Summit. Now, at the, amidst the heightened uh, tensions in the South China Sea, uh, the Philippines and Vietnam uh, witnessed a rapid development of their their uh, diplomatic and security cooperation with the issuance of the 2015 Strategic Partnership Declaration, and uh, like Japan, uh, Vietnam has likewise expressed its. Uh, concern over the increasing strategic competition, likewise viewed the South China Sea as an area of such competition. And since uh, Vietnam and the Philippines are actually uh, have overlapping claims in the South China Sea. And uh, however, in view of China's assertiveness, it appears that uh, that differences has been uh, put on the back burner. And uh, unlike Japan and the Philippines, Vietnam is arguably more of a tacit supporter of the current US-led order in the sense that it has not uh, expressed in the similar manner that, that the Philippines and Japan has, but at the same time also not criticized uh, the United States. And in fact, they have a comprehensive partnership since 2013 and 2016 marked a major turning point with uh, the United States lifting its uh, armed embargo against Vietnam. Now, the capacity building a component of the strategic partnership with Vietnam has yet to reach a similar level compared to that of uh, the Philippines and Japan. Uh, nonetheless, uh, Japan, uh, uh, Vietnam has provided the Philippines with uh, information on China or on, Viet on China's. Uh, tactics in the South China Sea. And uh, li they've likewise conducted naval interaction activities in the South China Sea as confidence building measures and like uh, Japan, Vietnam has likewise participated in the Philippines U.S. Palikatan exercises as an observer. And uh, being ASEAN, fellow ASEAN members, the, the two countries likewise expressed support for ASEAN centrality. And indeed, uh, the two countries uh, helped or each other in persuading ASEAN in issuing stronger statements on the South China Sea. Now, uh, the Philippines-Australia Comprehensive Partnership was established in 2015, founded on a uh, long history of uh, relationship between the two countries. And uh, like Japan, the Philippines and Vietnam has also expressed concern of the, over the increasing competition between the United States and China. Uh, Australia has been, has been consistent, uh, at least during the Aquino administration, in underscoring that regional stability is underpinned by continued U.S. presence in the region. And... Um, and as such, uh, also reaffirmed support for the U.S.-led system of alliances. They likewise viewed the South China Sea as an area of, a comp of competition and, uh, and as such uh, reaffirmed the need for freedom of navigation over flight in the region. Now, capac uh, capacity building efforts between the two countries are more institutionalized since we have a status of visiting forces agreement with Australia, which came into effect in 20. Uh, 2012, and uh, Australia has provided us with uh, two landing craft heavy vessels, of which the Philippines ordered three more units, and uh, and and Australia, uh, because we have an existing soft vow with them, has participated in the Philippines U.S. Palikatan exercises as an actual participant and not as an observer, like uh, the other two partners. And Australia has likewise expressed support for enhancing uh, an existing ASEAN-led uh, platforms. So the the viewing how the administration or the Aquino administration viewed a strategic partnership, uh, it could very well be argued that the Australia-Philippines Comprehensive Partnership is a strategic partnership in all but name. And uh, the decision of why there was a change in the nomenclature, it was uh, a result of the negotiations of uh, both countries, but nonetheless on the substantive aspects, uh, more of it were the same. But it could be surmised that uh, the change was largely due to the context in which this was uh, established. It was in 2015, shortly before the outcome of the of the arbitral ruling. So uh, it appears that Australia did not want to complicate its relations with China at the time, but nonetheless uh, established this uh, 
platform of cooperation with the Philippines that, uh, as I've said, uh, substantially conforms with the other two uh, partnerships. So in moving forward, uh, there are, th I think, two key challenges here. One is sustaining the momentum. If at any the the uh, strategic competition between the United States and China has continued to intensify, even in the midst of today's uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So the strategic environment of the, during the Aquino administration has in, in many ways has continued, but as I've said, it's just intensified. So there is a need really to uh, sustain the momentum of cooperation with the three countries. And second is uh, addressing gray zone coercion challenges. Uh, these are actions below the threshold of armed conflict. China has utilized this in order to slowly uh, alter the status quo. It is the essentially the tactic that was used in grabbing Scarborough Shoal from us and the establishment of the artificial islands and so on. So uh, the findings, uh, the context in which the Philippines pursued strategic partnership underscores a strategic behavior as a small state. Now for the Philippines, a strategic partnership is part of an overall strategy for small state survival. And uh, strategic partnerships are suitable for the current geostrategic environment because uh, as I pointed out, uh, this the, the strategic environment in which we live in today is not the same as uh, the US, USSR, uh, Cold War strategic competition in the sense that during the Cold War, it was relatively easier for states to pick sides. Now, it is not. Uh, China is very much integrated into uh, the global economy, in, a, in a, which is very different from how the Soviet Union behaved uh, during the Cold War. It, now, as I mentioned, it is suitable in the sense, because as I've mentioned, a key feature of, of a strategic partnership, it is less informal and a bit more flexible compared to a, a rigid uh, alliance. So in that, in that uh, sense, it is uh, more suitable. And there are uh, low commitment costs in the sense that the abandonment and trapment uh, dynamics that is faced in a traditional form of an alliance is not present here. And uh, so strategic partnerships of the Philippines develop differently. And uh, just a footnote, uh, the, it, could, it is noticeable that the Philippines-Vietnam relations was elevated into a strategic partnership despite not having that the long history of relations, at least when compared to the Philippines-Japan and arguably the Philippines-Australia relations as well. So uh, it's a, a notes on the recommendations on directions for future research. So uh, on uh, strategic partnerships, perhaps there could be further study on the relationship of uh, between strategic partnerships, uh, strategic partnerships among themselves, as well as with other security arrangements. Like, for example, uh, the relationship of the Japan-Philippines strategic partnership with that of the Philippines-US alliance and the broader uh, system of uh, US-led alliances and uh, partnerships, and uh, perhaps. Uh, studies on the evaluation they mentioned of uh, the strategic partnership and uh, the, the impact perhaps of uh, domestic political factors in the establishment of uh, uh, strategic partnership and its confluence with uh, systemic factors. On small, on small uh, powers, perhaps uh, studies on the strategy of small state survival in today's era of uh, strategic competition. On Philippine strategic studies, perhaps the impact of President Duterte's so-called pivot to China on the three partnerships that, uh, that I have earlier discussed. And uh, the, the challenges uh, of of uh, promoting national interest in uh, multilateral platforms. So on policy recommendations, I mentioned earlier, there's a, an imperative to sustain the strategic partnerships and uh, consideration of the SOFVA. I know uh, this is a controversial topic at this time because of the developments of the Philippines US VFA, but nonetheless, I think if, con if conditions are, are better, I think uh, VFA with Japan and Vietnam are still uh, worth worth uh, considering uh, because this, this would provide a more legal, a firmer legal uh, framework uh, for the presence of Vietnamese and Japanese forces in the country in the similar way that American and Australian forces uh, uh, have legal status here in the country. And lastly, as I've mentioned, uh, uh, confronting uh, gray zone coercion challenges. Uh, as I mentioned, it is being used by uh, China in uh, in promote in altering the status quo in the region. So with that, thank you very much, uh, ma'am sirs, for uh, your attention. Okay, thank you very much, Miko, uh, um, both for giving us a succinct um, uh, uh, summary of your uh, uh, paper and uh, for actually keeping to the time, uh, largely keeping to the time. Um, uh, 
so with that, uh, can I now proceed to uh, comments from the panel? Uh, Professor Tana, can we start with you? Okay, thank you, Miko, and congratulations um, for making it this far. Thank you. So my critique of the thesis focuses on the following. Um, so first, first point, um, the thesis is not able to, to sufficiently address the criticisms against strategic sandali lang. Stay, sandali lang, ha? Uh, I'm sorry. Um, nawala si Professor Bolinao, uh, Aris. Should we wait for her to come back before we proceed or uh, uh, do we continue uh, as is? I think nag-ano ulit yung kanyang ano eh, yung yeah, eh. wifi niya eh. Siguro po, hintay lang tayo ng Oh, sige. Let's, so, let's just lang, wait for her first. Oh, okay. Para lang, baka yung mga tanong niya, eh, itatanong na ni oh, Tate. Oo nga. Oo. Oh, oh. oh, yan. Sige, yeah, pwede ka na mag-start. Ah, Lu, okay. okay ka na? Nakamute ka, pero okay ka na? Okay. Oh, sige. Um, um, I'm asking si Professor Tana to proceed with her comments. Uh, hindi ko alam kung saan ka na... At what point doon sa presentation ni Miko ikaw na wala, hindi ko napansin kagad kung ano. Uh, but uh, he finished his presentation um, and I'm already asking the members of the panel, is that is that okay? Or would you like Miko to repeat yung last ano niya? Yung last hindi, uh, slide niya. Hindi, mabukod sa recommendations. Nakita okay. ko yun. Oh, sige. So okay na tayo. Um, yeah. oh, sige. Kung ganon, uh, Professor Tana, please. Okay, so first point. Uh, so the thesis, I think, is not able to sufficiently address nga, the criticisms against uh, strategic partnerships, specifically that it is just a mere political label and that what constitutes strategic in these partnerships remain vague. Okay, so it's the first point. Second, uh, it is also not clear what the thesis is arguing about and what variables are being studied. So the questions posed on page 15 seem to seek only descriptive answers like you know under what conditions do small states undertake strategic partnerships and then what are the factors that influence the philippines what are the factors that determine the choices to forge specific strategic partnerships so remember that the thesis has to explain something and not just to describe or not just to enumerate reasons so this brings us to another set of questions that what is the problem why is it a problem and to whom it is a problem? Okay, third, the third point concerns your theory, your theoretical framework. So I'm not entirely convinced with the theory that is selected. So what is this theory of small states by Michael McCamiet? So is it an established theory? Are there other scholarly works that employs this theory, that employ this theory? What are the limitations or weaknesses of this um, theory? And that given the weaknesses, why do you still choose to use it? Okay, and then related to that, you also said on page 20 that the study is situated in the realist understanding of small state behavior. So my question then is, why not use a variant of realism instead to explain the research problem? Michael McCamit himself used neoclassical realism in one or two of his own works. So why not use NCR too? Or if not NCR, there are other theories that could also explain the behavior of small states. Oh, by the way, can we use the term small states and small powers interchangeably? I think this is also not uh, fully explored in the paper. Okay, so as I was saying, there are other theories that could explain the behavior of small states. For example, Muhammad Ayub's subaltern realism, or you could also use rule theory or other foreign policy analysis approaches or constructive risk. Mm -hmm. IR approaches. So there's also an article by Victor Biglu, for example, that explains small states foreign policy through role theory. So I guess my point is your justification for your theory choice is weak. Okay, um, on page 60 onwards, you briefly discuss liberal institutionalism and, and constructivism, but your explanation on why you did not use them seems to be lacking. So perhaps you should not be too quick to dismiss them. Okay, and then also concerning the theory, you also used Wilkins' paradigm on small on strategic partnerships. So how exactly does this complement 
um, a chemistry of small states. So in your presentation earlier, you were able to discuss it, but in, in the original manuscript that you submitted, I think this is not clearly art articulated. So the link between the, between these two frameworks must be firmly established. Also, my impression is that these two frameworks, Wilkins and Makamets, they are quite descriptive. So Makamets shows how small states behave, and then Wilkins shows how um, strategic partnerships are formed. So how do they exactly provide a framework for analysis? So on page 26, you have a conceptual diagram, but it does not reflect the assumptions of the theories or theory and does not illustrate the relationship among the variables. What are the studies variables anyway? So what are the independent variables? What's dependent variables? Are there any intervening variables? Okay. And then for the uh, review of related lit, there should be a separate section on the gaps in contributions. So how exactly does the thesis hope to fill the gaps in the existing literature and what are the studies theoretical and empirical contributions. So in your presentation, you summarize the findings, but I think there's really nothing novel about these findings. So you have to offer something new using the theory that you've chosen if you still you know, want to stick with it, okay? So how exactly does the thesis hope to fill the gaps in the existing literature? What are the studies theoretical contributions? I think I mentioned this already. I also suggest that you make a table that summarizes the main themes and which major works fall under such themes. Make it just more organized for us to see clearly like this is how strategic partnerships are positioned in the extant literature. And these are the major works that you know, deal with this topic. Then you can see what are the gaps. And then for the organization, so I suggest that the data chapter is to be organized based on the case studies. So for example, chapter three should be about Philippines and Japan, four Philippines and Australia, and then five the Philippines and Vietnam for the readers to get a more nuanced understanding of the comparisons. But I guess this is entirely up to you and your supervisor and if you still have time to revise it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I guess the last yeah, finally, my final comment. The rest are in the in the document, right? It's a small comments. So these are just the major ones. Yes, mm, the findings should also reflect the assumptions of the theory. Like, so the findings, how does the theory explain these findings? And not just describe, said well, you have to really analyze. Mm. So those are the major ones. Thank you, Professor Tana. Uh, so, uh, Professor Bolinao, can I invite you to uh, to give us your thoughts on the uh, uh, thesis? All right. Thank you. Uh, yung sa akin naman, I, uh, I approached yung study as a non-political scientist, of course. So this is all very interesting to me. Okay, although tama yung sinabi ng ano no ni uh, uh, Dr. Tana na parang descriptive siya. So that was also the sense that I got when I read the thesis. It was very descriptive, pero wala talaga siyang pinupunto. I mean, these are the same things that can be found doon sa annexes, sa annexes na uh, yun din ang nakalagay pero parang in nilabas lang niya tapos nilagay sa thesis. Okay? So, hindi ko alam kung yun ay tatakaran sa polsay. Okay? Pero ganun din yung dating sa akin nung ano. Okay? These are some of the questions I have. These are more uh, born of curiosity. Okay? As a non-political scientist. Pero um, my first question is, what is in... Uh, what is in it for the larger states? Nakita ko yung advantage for the smaller state na papasok sila sa ganitong uri ng partnership pero hindi ko nakikita kung ano yung advantage nito. Bakit pumapayag yung larger state na pumasok sa ganitong uh, partnership? I, I don't think it was explained. I didn't find it. And I'm so curious to 
uh, say kung ano yung rationale behind entering in a larger state, entering into this kind of partnership. Okay, so that's one. Tapos yung pangalawa, uh, I'm very curious kung bakit may hiwalay ng strategic partnership with Vietnam and with ASEAN. Okay, so ano ba yung ASEAN? Hindi rin na ipaliwanag to, medyo nebular, nebulous sa akin yung ano ba yung uh, core uh, mission at saka principles ng ASEAN at bakit kailangan gumawa ng hiwalay na partnership with Vietnam. Okay, so ito ba ay dahil lang meron silang uh, common uh, claim sa South China Sea pero ganun din naman ang Malaysia at saka Indonesia pero wala tayong such strategic partnership with them so hindi ko hindi mala, malinaw sa akin itong uh, well hindi na ipalabas doon sa thesis kung bakit na, we have one with Vietnam and not with other countries na may claim din sa uh, South China Sea at bakit hindi ito covered ng ASEAN na uh, regional uh, alliance? Okay, so baka kailangang linawin pa yung bahaging inyo, yun for lay people na hindi naman political scientists. But this is like um, bahagi nung uh, uh, kailangang maintindihan ano? kung ang pag-uusapan ay yung South China Sea uh, claims, especially... Uh, with a larger country like China. Okay, tapos uh, oh, ito, this one meron akong nakita sa page 136 na medyo history. Okay, uh, sa, it says relations with the, between the Philippines and Vietnam started many centuries ago. Nakalagay na evidences show that inhabitants of both countries are already engaged in maritime trade prior to the coming of the Europeans. Now, I teach pre-colonial Southeast Asian history at wala pa akong nakitang uh, ebidensya nito. No? Actually, there is no direct trade between the Philippines and Vietnam. Okay, very surprising, lalo na katapat lang natin yung bansa. Pero we never had this uh, engagement with Vietnam. So I think you should recheck your source. Kasi wala pa akong nakitang source nito. Hindi ko alam kung nasa bagong literature to, no? Baka meron na. Pero please recheck your source. Um, because there is no evidence of direct trade between the two countries in pre-colonial times. Baka earliest is uh, European period na, no? Or 19th century at least. Pero kailangan uh, i-check. Okay, tapos uh, another question I have is yung comprehensive partnership na palagay ko ay hindi na ipaliwanag mabuti. It was never explained nor discussed. So in what ways, aspects, and areas were the Australia-Philippines uh, partnership comprehensive? Parang tinitingnan ko naman yung table. Parang pareho lang naman yung sinasabi dun sa... Vietnam and Japan. So, bakit kailangan nitong um, very specific nomenclature na ito ay comprehensive as yung iba strategic lang? Yung strategic, medyo na ipaliwanag, ano? pero yung comprehensive, I never found uh, it explicitly discussed in the paper. Okay, tapos uh, isa pang uh, historical uh, note sa page 167 ng paper, nakalagay, from Tokyo's perspective, a powerful foreign country ruling the Philippine Islands as a colony would, would be detrimental to Japan's national security. Uh, medyo na, napag-isip ako nito. Tapos, uh, ang alam ko kasi, by the mid-19th century, the Europeans were all over China including Britain and Hong Kong. So I doubt kung yung Philippines ay nasa radar ng Japan at this period. Pero pa-check na rin kung merong ganitong ugnayan o talagang na-threaten ang Japan kasi may foreign power yung ano, 
may foreign na uh, power na nasa Pilipinas. And babanggitin ko na rin na at this time, eh, pabagsak na yung Spain, so hindi na siya masyadong threat nung panahon ng Meiji period sa Japan. Okay, tapos... Uh, Nag-e-exist pa ba tong strategic partnerships na ito? Medyo nabitin ako dun sa ano, no? Although hindi nakalagay sa paper na hindi uh, pasok yung evaluation, medyo nabitin ako kasi ano nangyari? Pinagpatuloy ba ito ni uh, Duterte? Ino-honor ba niya itong mga strategic partnerships? I think kailangang lagyan ng some sort of short epilogue para lang makita yung kung ano na yung nangyari at saka saan magte-take off yung Duterte administration. Okay, dito sa bahaging ito. Kasi parang bitin eh. Parang ano nangyari pagkatapos. Tapos iba na yung nakikita mo ngayon. Okay, tapos doon naman sa... Ah, isa pang tanong, ito naman ay yung tungkol sa pag-conceal ng identity ng three informants. I don't think this was explained kasi sa history may dahilan kung bakit kinoconceal yung identity. Eh parang wala naman akong nabasang ka-controversial dito sa papel na ito para i-conceal yung identity nung tatlong in-interview. Um, pwede bang malaman kung bakit naka-conceal yung identity nung ano? This doesn't look ka uh, controversial uh, to me. Kasi mukhang naka-spell out naman dun sa mga agreements. Ano? So baka kailangan ipaliwanag o hindi ko alam. Kasi sa defense, kahit na-concealed yung identity ng mga uh, informant, sa defense, pinipresent sila. Ina-identify. Pero sa paper, uh, may label lang sila number one, number two, or X, Y, and so on. Okay, tapos pinapaliwanag kung bakit kailangan i-conceal yung identity. So, hindi ko alam kung ano nangyari dito. Okay, tapos yung may annexes na kasama doon sa pinadala na package. Hindi ko well, sa hindi ko alam kung ano ginagawa sa Polsai, pero sa history kasi para ilagay mo siyang annex, naka-refer siya doon sa text. So, C C annex A, C annex B. Pero parang wala namang nakalagay na ano no, parang ano lang siya for your information. Okay? Pag naglagay ka ng annex, kailangan naka-refer siya dun sa text para mag dun mo na lang titingnan yung mahabang ano. So baka kailangan ayusin pa tong bahaging ito. Tapos yung panghuli, yung last uh, note ko, hindi ko alam kung ginagawa sa Polsai, pero hindi ba talaga ina-append yung transcript ng interviews? And how do you know? Hindi ko ka alam ko alin bahagi rito yung ano no yung interview. Parang hindi naman siya material masyado doon sa uh, pagbuo ng thesis. So usually, well sa history, kinakabit namin yung transcript ng interviews para makita kung ano yung contribution nitong mga in-interview doon sa uh, pagbuo ng teorya or pagsagot ng kailangang uh, information on the thesis. Okay? So, uh, hindi ko alam kung paano aayusin. You have to just uh, check uh, with your advisor for that. Okay? So, yun lamang po. Maraming salamat. Maraming salamat, uh, Professor Bolinao. Um, Medyo madami na yon Miko. Hindi ko na alam kung ano pa idadagdag ko doon sa mga pinagkasabi nila. No? Um, but actually, uh, ang, ang, ang sa akin, there are two points no, na, na pwede ko pang idagdag siguro doon sa nasabi nila. Because they, uh, um, what Professor Tana, Professor Tana and Bolinaw have actually uh, 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 told you are um, very specific items within the thesis that, that, that uh, needs uh, to be uh, uh, addressed. No? Um, ako ang 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 idadagdag ko lang dito, no. Um, it's more of uh, and it's and it reinforces what Professor Tana was uh, saying uh, earlier on. You chose two 
to amalgamate two two theories no uh, yung kay Michael uh, uh, magcommit about yung small state ano niya at saka yung kay Wilkins about uh, uh, kay Wilkins on strategic uh, uh, on strategic partnerships no um in your in your uh, 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 establishment of yung comparative matrix mo as far as the different kinds of strategic partnerships are concerned, um, you were able to explain clearly kung saan pumapasok yung kay Wilkins doon sa ano na yun, no? But I think medyo ma, hindi masyadong uh, klaro yung pasok noong small state doon, no? Uh, um, in, in terms of uh, trying to compare across, no? And I think this goes, uh, this goes back to yung isang punto na sinabi ni uh, ni uh, Professor Bolinaw uh, tungkol doon sa beat, nabitin siya. No? Kasi I, I, I think um, since ang case mo dito is the Philippines, right? Y yun yung ano mo, it's the case of the Philippines making choices as to uh, uh, entering into strategic partnerships with certain countries, right? Yun yung pinaka natin dito. Um, if I'm going to try to drop the picture of what you're actually trying to say, no, uh, it's like saying that the Philippines is faced with a, a strategic environment you know, that is dominated by the relationship between the, Philipp between the United States and China. You know? And because of that, nagre-respond ang Pilipinas doon. And ang response niya is to enter into strategic uh, uh, partnerships with certain countries in the region, right? Parang ganun yun nga. So in, in, in which case, yung binanggit ni Professor Bolinaw kanya nabitin siya about um, where does this uh, or how does this how is this picture now affected by the entry of Duterte no in, into that ano? in other words parang yung discussion mo no um is really a classic ir uh, representation in the sense that um even small states look at uh, look at their foreign relations no in purely foreign relations terms meaning to say na parang ang ano dito is that it's the environment it's it's the strategic environment that that informs you know, the choices being made by the Philippines. Um, in which case, if that's the argument, then there should be no difference between the Aquino administration, you no, know, and the Duterte administration, right? Parang ganon yung isang ano doon. Your argument would in fact be stronger, you no? Know, kung sa kaling mapapakita mo na nung pumasok yung Duterte administration, hindi nagkaroon ng pagbabago. No, doon sa kung yung pursuit natin nung ano nung strategic uh, uh, partnerships na yon no uh, kaya kaya i think importante yung sinasabi ni professor bolino na baka mamaya kailangan mong maglagay ng ano kung kung hindi data yung uh, yung Duterte administration no yung foreign policy ng Duterte administration it might be important for you to show that no that even during the because um, the strategic environment within which nag-operate yung Aquino administration no, is continuing on until the Duterte administration. Hindi nagbago yung Duterte administration's uh, approach as far as strategic partnerships are concerned. Then that reinforces the argument that you're actually making. No? So, baka importante na mapakita mo nga na ganun yung, ganun yung punto. No? Na, na, um, even if you're not going to include the Duterte administration in your uh, in in the uh, 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 in the body of the thesis itself, an epilogue might actually show. Yeah. No, yung ano yun, important yung important yun. Kasi yun yung basic argument mo, eh, di ba? Na parang ang ang ano dito is uh, it's the strategic environment that shapes itong ano. Um, which brings me to uh, to, to 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 a few points. Na, na parang if that's the case, no. Um, then what is the value of arguing small states? No, because the, 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 the point I'm making is this. The impression ko kung ganon, there's no difference between the calculations. Parang Waltzian yung nagiging argument. There's no difference between the calculations made by small states and the major powers when it comes to the strategic environment, right? Parang ang, ang ano lang ang nagkakaroon ng pagkaiba is how they actually respond to it, right? That as small states with major vulnerabilities, no, mas gusto nilang magkaroon ng kakampi, no? whereas major powers actually do things unilaterally, no? on their own. They strengthen their militaries, no? uh, they, they pursue their own interests without... Ano. Pero as small states, parang... So, kumbiga, 
the difference seems to be in the mode of how you approach the uh, situation. Parang ganon yung ano. Um, and is that the case? I guess that's the question. Diba? Parang ang ano kasi dito is that uh, is there uh, is the difference between the calculations made by small states and 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 major powers actually the same? The difference lies only in the mode by which they can actually respond or the limit the limited uh, um uh, the limitations imposed by their weakness or their smallness no uh, that that uh, 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 with which they can actually make choices no as to how to approach the situation kasi doon sa doon sa definition ni Michael magkamit ng small states um pinapakita doon na meron certain characteristics ng small states na wala sa mga malalaking states as far as how they approach you know, like their uncertainties the vulnerabilities etc right so parang ang ano ngayon doon is that um, if that's the case no yung point na yon hindi ba importante ngayon ay pakita mo na dahil doon no may pagkakaiba ang calculations ng small states with big states right and in which case um uh, i think the point i'm making here is um baka importante natin i-consider doon sa ano ah, hindi, hindi importante pero hindi pwede na iwan natin na butas yung discussion about say domestic politics no parang i don't want you to go into domestic politics kasi i ano yun uh, iba, that's a whole different discussion altogether pero kaya importante para sa akin yung discussion na nagbago ba yung across administrations nagkaroon ba ng pagbabago in terms of the appreciation and therefore the uh, appreciation for the strategic environment and therefore the approach that was take, being taken as far as strategic partnerships are actually concerned no um uh, uh, which is which is really more of the big picture in doon sa ano na parang kailangan ma, ma connect mo nga yung argument mo doon sa doon sa your attempt to actually amalgamate these two approaches right na parang ang ano mo ay small states have these kinds of calculus therefore strategic partnerships right parang ganun yung ano doon no um and i think that goes back to what professor tana was actually saying ano ba talaga yung argument mo kailangan makita natin yung ano na yon no uh, so para sa akin it's it's just tightening no from the macro level the theoretical conceptual level no uh, doon papunta doon sa mga cases na na pinakita mo no um and i think part nung cult nung nung anong yon part nung um uh, nung tightening na yon is actually the question of and i think this this brought up by professor bolinao uh, earlier as well no parang bakit itong tatlong cases na ito no pa parang vietnam australia japan is it because these are the only cases of strategic partnerships that we actually entered into no which is okay fine yun yung pinaka ano natin but then baka mamaya isang question ngayon na andito is to tighten the rationale as to why these are the countries that we actually entered into a strategic partnership with no um uh, parang andon eh I, I, I think i i think ang what 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 professor tan and professor bolina were actually saying is um you might actually have the points no uh, as far as these issues are actually concerned no kaya lang you treat them very cavalierly no parang it seems obvious kailangan pa anuhin mo ng konti lalo na from a theoretical conceptual standpoint right so parang parang it's not just a question of saying na uh, ito yung situation kaya ganito yung naging response treat it no theoretically and conceptually parang how does this actually reinforce your choice of the theory and the concept right yun yung pinaka ano doon how does your uh, taking in of the vulnerabilities no uh, uh, or discrete kinds of issues no that um small states actually have how does that reinforce the choice no of a strategic partnership diba parang ganun yung isang yung kailangan na maging ano doon um which uh which will help you in terms of your point ni ano ni ni professor Bolinao about well parang ano ba yung bago dito or ano ba yung naiiba dito sa yung sinasabi dito kumpara sa sinasabi ng iba using another no yung sinasabi ng professor Tana, using another theory for instance right parang ang 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 gusto mong i-emphasize dito are the choices made by small states right and the unique 
the unique conditions that they face as small states, right? And why then these are the kinds of choices that are actually open to them. Diba? Yun yung, yun yung conceptual connections na kailangan natin uh, uh, i-tighten in that, in, that uh, in that particular context. No? Um, and I think um, tightening that goes some ways no, to actually answering some of the points that sinabi ni na Professor Tana at saka ni Professor Borinao. No. So I'll, I'll, I'll stop there kasi nga parang I, I think I'll just be reinforcing kung ano yung sinabi na Professor Tan at Professor Bolina with other comments but since you already have them then I don't think that there's any need for me for me to actually repeat no, uh, to be redundant about those particular points. So um, uh, the, uh, uh, having said those things no, um, Miko uh, would you like to actually respond no? uh, beyond telling us that yes you will change your thesis no? ano, yung, ano ba yung mga ibang uh, you might actually have some direct responses to some of the comments that we actually have made. No? So, um, uh, so I'd like to invite you right now to actually uh, uh, tell us uh, uh, your thoughts no, regarding these uh, this, this points that have actually been made by the members of the panel. Yes sir. yes, sir. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, yes, sir. I took note of uh, the comments and uh, uh, please allow me to respond to uh, some of them. Uh, yes. Regarding the, the choice of the theory, I, I, I actually consider really the neoclassical uh, realist framework, but my fear was that uh, given the short period of time uh, and since NCR uh, captures also the the domestic political factors, uh, which I think is very important also. I'm not, I'm not dismissing it. I'm, uh, I'm just saying that I may not be able to uh, give justice to it in, in using that framework. Uh, so I chose a, 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 a uh, theory that uh, specifically tailored for small states because uh, the, the neoclassical realists, if I'm not mistaken, can likewise be applied to uh, major powers as well. So there, and uh, the yes, the small state, small power can uh, interchangeably. Uh, I understand that uh, uh, while there may indeed be different, but it appears that in the literature they are they're being used very loosely and interchangeably. And uh, yes, uh, the for the justification of the the theory, I I. I I, I think the, the 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 link that what would link them is that it both comes from a uh, from the realist tradition, if you will. So I think that that uh, that, that links the the, the two uh, frameworks on the variables. Uh, of course, I'm looking at uh, the the strategic environment, and the on and of course the the, the results would be the 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 security partnerships that uh, we have on okay uh, yes uh, regarding Dr. Bolinao's question I, I I think yes the uh, the uh, these are valid questions on what uh, what are its advantages. No, from uh, for the perspective of the major powers, but uh, given the the uh, the research questions, I'm trying to look looking at it from the perspective of the other side of the small powers because uh, the, the the literature has thus far focused mainly on how the major powers view it. No? So I, I tried to view it from the other side, but I'm uh, but of course uh, these are very uh, valid concerns on uh, how the other side saw it. No. And uh, yes, on the issue of uh, why do we have a strategic partnership with Vietnam, since we are already given, uh, we are already members of ASEAN. I think the I think the, one of the main arguments for this is that uh, it doesn't mean that we are members of ASEAN. It does not mean that we are precluded from uh, have having uh, a special relations with each of the members. No. So in, the, in this case, uh, we forge a strategic partnership with Vietnam. And uh, as I, I think I pointed out in the, in the first chapter, uh, among ASEAN member states themselves, they have also, I think, uh, Indonesia and Vietnam, uh, Singapore and Vietnam, and uh, a whole other sets. No? So it does not necessarily mean that we are members of ASEAN. We are precluded already from uh, member uh, of having uh, 
you know, uh, having this kind of relationship with them. If, if, if anything, I think uh, it could, an argument could be made that having a strategic partnership with a fellow ASEAN member state could somehow uh, reinforce or become a platform for co for cooperating on certain initiatives uh, in ASEAN. Uh, and uh, for example, uh, currently, uh, uh, this is now speaking as on, on the current administration, the, the Philippines is the country coordinator for ASEAN-China uh, relations, and Vietnam is the current chair of ASEAN. So uh, I think an argument could be made that uh, since uh, we are strategic, partnership, uh, strategic partners with Vietnam, uh, we, we could leverage our positions currently within ASEAN in order to coordinate our certain initiatives, like for example, in the drafting of the code of conduct, in the initiatives of the ASEAN Defense Ministers Meeting Plus. So there, and uh, yes, I took note, ma'am, of the of the the, the pre-colonial history, and uh, yes, I I I I, took, I also took note the need, not uh, what Professor Kraft and uh, Professor Bully now pointed out, the need to have an epilogue to see if the if the theory. Uh, would still stand even in the change of uh, administration in the Philippines. And uh, yes, regarding ma'am, the, inter uh, the, the interviews, I think uh, the, the people from DFA and NSC specifically asked me to not name them. So I, I honored that. Uh, I, they asked me not to name them and one of them even asked me not to record the conversation. So I, 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 I uh, respected their their decision, and I just simply took notes, but I did not uh, record. Uh, perhaps because of uh, the sensitivity of the positions that they are currently holding, uh, they would not want to complicate that with a uh, thesis uh, from a UP student. So, uh, yes, on the annexes, I, I I think my my error in this regard is not to cite them, but I did use heavily. Uh, the 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 annexes in the actual text now, but that's, yes, ma'am. I'll uh, just include C annex like this. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, you, uh, regarding Professor Kraft's comment, uh, as I have noted, the the need for an epilogue to show continuity, and uh, yes, I, I think this is a very interesting point. Uh, the, yung, 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 uh, the difference in the, in the calculus of a major power and the of and the small power, uh, because I, I think what from what the existing literature points out, from a perspective of a major power, it views a strategic partnership as a mechanism for power projection. Mainly, uh, I think from a small state, it does not view it that way. Uh, because, as I've mentioned, because of the vulnerabilities that we face, it's more of uh, more of what we can get than than less of what we can offer. From from the perspective of, of a major power, uh, strategic partnership is a tool, essentially, for the balance of power and particularly projecting power. Like, for example, I think a good example would be the Singapore-U.S. strategic partnership. No, uh, I think. The, from the Americans' perspective, it is an alternative, if you will, uh, given we have uh, the Philippine Senate voted to, to uh, end the presence of U.S. bases. From, from the perspective of the U.S., it's a power projection uh, mechanisms with the Singaporeans. But from the perspective of the Singaporeans, it is different. Uh, it is more of, uh, mo more of uh of a of a uh, not a power projection because they just go to the U.S. for simply of exercises, uh, but uh, from the perspective of the Singaporeans, it's uh, more to to uh, to uh, to balance uh, China. Yeah. So there. Um, uh, yes, I took note really of the other comments, sir, ma'am. Members of the panel, are there any follow-up uh, comments, questions? No, uh, Professor Tana, please. Uh, yeah. So if the argument is just that, I mean, if you don't want to look at the domestic level variables, and if you just want to look at the structural level factors that would affect behavior, so what makes uh, the 
theory that you use so different from structural realism? Parang kasi if we if the Philippines is just responding to external pressures and that's the reason why they're forming strategic partnerships is because of external threats, the changing security environment, then that makes the small states reactive, right? So where's the agency in that? And then possibly one reason, uh, one uh, solution for you to um, explain your question of what's the difference between small states and great powers is that if you look at domestic level factors like you know foreign policy executives in the Philippines, how do they think, what compels them, what kind of role conceptions do they have, what kind of domestic concept contestations do they face. And that makes it different. Now hindi lang naman it's because of the structural fa factors na hindi lang they're responding to the threat from China. Right? And then regarding the interview, there's a way actually, even if they don't want to be named, you can just still cite them, like personal communication and the date, and then you can just say from this official, DFA official, you don't have to name them. But yeah, as Professor Bolino said, it's important that you cite them. I mean, you made an effort, right? Yeah. You reached out to these people, you made time. So you, you have to use the data that you gathered. And mm. mm. um, so yeah, I think it's also important to point me, Professor Bolino, what are the implications for the great powers? Okay. Yes, Professor Arugay. Yeah. Uh, thank, oh, yeah. Right. thank you to uh, Mam Lu, uh, Tay, and and Sir Herman for the comments. I I just want to give like the the background because um, I know that. Both of you, see Professor Bolinao and and, doc, and Dr. Bolinao and Dr. Tana, were not uh, present during the proposal defense. And um, in fact, um, uh, the original uh, member of the panel is, is the late Professor Eileen Baviera, who was part uh, of the proposal defense. Um, and in fact, um, I would know that she would love to to hear the presentation of Miko as well as chip in, and I think she would have really sharp uh, comments as well. No, so but I'm, I'm but I think Dr. Tana did a terrific job of pointing mm -hmm. out the limitations of the thesis. Uh, just to give a background, uh, the 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 proposal that Miko defended had eight, if not tama ba ako, Miko seven or eight iterations. Yes, uh, and it yeah. really started. A theoretical, no? um, and I think it has something to do with Miko's particular search. He was trying to look for the the perfect theory. He was trying to say, "Sir, walang theory on small states." Eh. And then, so in his search, wala siyang nakita. Then he tried to see what is available. No? So I think when when we're say, saying, "Ano ba yung contribution ng thesis na to?" It's mm -hmm. to really to really see that these grand theories of IR have not really paid attention to states that are not just simply small, but have been the grass, sabi nga dun sa African proverb, but the, <laughs> the vulnerable. No? And I think yung vulnerability na yon, pwede natin sabihin, eh, vulnerable naman talaga ang Pilipinas noon pa. No? Kaya nga tatlo ang nanakop, uh, uh, yung geographical position niya makes it um, highly prized by by major powers but something happened and i think kaya nga gusto ko sabihin kay Miko noon na kahit Aquino administration lang yung tinitignan mo there was a major shift i think in the so hindi enough yung external eh. these are processed also even by the same people no? yeah. so ang counterfactual niya nga siguro nito is if if Miko asked the questions to SND before and after Scarborough show, would he have given the same responses? Because remember, the Aquino administration was a bit, was not anti-China at the get-go. Diba? Um, nag, nag, nag boycott din yung ambassador natin dun sa Nobel laureate uh, ceremony. Uh, Pinoy went to China, went to Guangzhou to pay respect to his ancestors. So, Ang, ang ano dito is something happened. No? So it's not just tama si Dr. Tana eh. Hindi may agency. And I think 
that is something that the thesis could contribute to. No? Uh, external, the strategic environment, is not simply absorbed. It's also processed by the way uh, of, of certain developments that have happened in the past. So, siguro ito yung uh, may, sa akin, major limitation or, or flaw, you might say, ng thesis, hindi niya na, na trace eh. Yung evolution nung Aquino administration foreign policy and, and, and security policy determination. No? Uh, and therefore, I think one major way that the thesis could also move forward is part din ng epilogue na yon is yes, the Duterte administration might be sleeping on this strategic partnership, but it is more than very excited in striking different kinds of partnerships with other allies. So we've heard news of, of partnerships with Russia, with Israel, with, with, with China, and sa, part, ako naman, dun din ako nabitin. So in a way, a small state will continue to engage in such behavior. Eh. Ang ma malaking difference lang is tama in the choice, but also the way that they, ano yung mga impetus, bakit biglang naging urgent? Yung pag-sign. No? So, Miko, you need to capture that. But biglaan when, supposedly, parang dapat yan evolutionary process. Eh. So, getting to know you, di ba, the Japan, um, and, and Dr. Tana would know this particularly well, di ba, nagsimula sa Japan, <laughs> and then build, it, it build on and on. No? Such, um, ang naging replacement nun on the part of Vietnam might be the ASEAN process itself. No? So hindi na kailangan na mas bilateral. And dun din ako nakukulangan sa thesis. Kaya nga gusto ko, sabi ko kay Miko, it matrix mo because the outcome might be the same, but the processing processes have, are, are all different. And um, sa akin, Vietnam is also a small, a small state pa. No? By, by, I don't know, I don't, that might be contested to some, pero sa, I think ang consensus dito. But the two others are middle to major powers. So, meron din maaring diferensya. But, I mean, si Miko, sinabi niyo na kayo, sir, kasi nung sa consultations namin nung unang panahon pa, proposal pa lang, sir, kasi nga, it's a reaction to China. So sabi ko, yes, that might sound the obvious reason, but you cannot just, it cannot be that, uh, that brazen kaagad in a thesis. There must be a way for it to be, to be argued. Uh, and in a way, then the Aquino administration's assessment of China is the thing that changed. It's not really the external environment. So, uh, dun lang po sa... Um, Ma'am Lu, ta tama po kayo, no? we need to, alam nyo naman po ang mga policy, lalo na yung mga IR, we play fast and lose with history. With the exception of Sir Herman, kasi histor history trained yan eh. But some of us, if not most of us in IR, who does a little of IR, si Dr. Tana, IR talaga ako, ano lang ako, saling kit. Uh, we need to be, siguro ito yung lesson, no? we need to be more diligent, no? Uh, in in invoking historical details. So, Miko, kung walang say, kung, kung yan eh, ang nag-claim yan eh, IR, may, may, may grain of salt ka da dapat yan ipa-fact check. No? Unless historian talaga yan at his, historian yung sources, um, then dapat parating may, may, may doubt on, on, on the sources. Doon lang po sa annex, Miko, kasi... Uh, May pagkakaibang annex at appendix. Okay. Yung appendix, pwede mong hindi banggitin. No? At in fact, yung interview transcripts, kunyari sa MA thesis ko, appendix siya. Kung baga, hindi, mo kaila, hindi naman talaga siya necessary. No? But if you are just curious. No? So, hmm. siguro dun sa annex, hindi ko lang din napansin kasi siguro magkalapit sila appendix, annex. Uh, kailangan magkaroon ka ng differentiation which of the which of them is which some might be annexes some might be appendices so kung critical sa thesis annex kung kung importante siya meaning hindi maintindihan ng reader yung thesis without it pero kung hindi siya necessary but could enrich or could supplement then it's an appendix so i think some of those some of your 
uh, annexes our, our, our appendices, but if they are indeed annexes, then they have to be mentioned. Uh, sige sir, yun lang po. Um, but I think um, Miko's uh, thesis has evolved from really a thesis na mas policy oriented. No? Na sabi ko, eh, hindi ka naman studyante sa institution mo, no? Kung NDCP student ka, baka pwedeng makapasa to, pero hindi eh. No? Studyante ka ng Department of Political Science and may disciplinal no? rigors na ini-impose sa'yo. So, we will take that into account in the in the revisions, but um, I think Miko has um, has been shown how uh, a an empirically rich thesis, sa akin kasi empirically rich siya, um, is insufficient. No? At the end, the empirics must be backed up with a framework and with a just... Kaya nga, if you notice, parang may dinagdag si Miko dyan na huli, yung rival theories and rival explanations. Pinadagdag ko yon Kasi sabi ko, pag hindi mo nilagay yan, tatanungin na tatanungin ka. So I think kailangan pang dagdagan, kailangan pang uh -huh. i ano yon and in fact baka kailangan i ilagay din sa simula so that the reader will know na the 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 student knew about all the other rival uh, explanations, knew all about what other theories might offer as an explanation but he kumaga hindi lang niya masyado na sa boxingan ng teorya yung manok niya hindi masyado niyang na set up to 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 a good fight eh, with with the mm. others kaya nabubugbog no and um kaya sabi ni Dr. Tana the role of the of domestic politics ako nga pati yung Vietnam and the Philippines have territorial disputes yeah yeah that they are willing to kumbaga sweep under the rug no unlike you Australia and Japan is fine no but yung Pili kaya nga yung Philippines and Japan yung pinaka interesting sa akin eh so you're talking mm. about two small states para lang talaga siyang na, it's more talagang nag uh, nagbalance no but you have two small states balancing supposedly against a very yeah. very big mm. state no um, at sa akin importante din yung historical relations sabi ni Dr. Uh, Lubolina yung sa Vietnam hindi ganun ka thick yung relations but if we're talking about Japan for example Japan and Philippines naman yung talaga so kung may variation na ganun then you might argue na then it doesn't count as the explanation. If they vary in terms of the thickness and the long shadow of ex, uh, experience with one another, if that varies, then, then according to um, uh, the philosophy of social science, we can count that as uh, the explanation because the phenomenon is similar. It resulted in strategic partnerships. So, hindi lang din na lumitaw, no? Kasi... Uh, sa, atin, sa disiplina natin, Miko, the best way for you to defend your theory is you, you, you use the other theories and you make the argument that it doesn't work. No? You, don't, you just don't ignore it. No? You have to say na, okay, I've considered theory B, theory C, pero hindi siya nagpipit. And this is where your empirics come from. No? So, sa tingin ko, yun yung kailangan mas paigtingin. And um, uh, as and and sabi ko kay Miko, Miko parang nakalimutan mo yung theories of IR, no? Nakalimutan mo yung clashing, yung battle, no, in the arena kasi dapat 'yan um, sa simula at dun sa dulo. Sige sir, yun lang po. Uh, maraming pong salamat ulit. Thank you, Aris. Um Professor Bolinao, yes. Yeah, uh, actually my clean comment lang ano, tapos kasi na bigla akong naisip ito no doon sa comment mo Herman na hmm. yung pag gravitate ba natin sa China under the Duterte administration at ito na yung sa epilogue na sinasabi ko no ito ba ay bahagi ng some sort of strategic partnership or do we have a strategic partnership with China now kasi kung hmm. naggravitate na tayo doon sa threat ano pa yung silbi ng ibang strategic <laughs> partnership natin so, baka kailangan ding i-factor in yun. Kasi nga, 
siguro kaya ako nabitin doon sa pagbabasa ng ano kasi parang hindi na ito yung realidad ngayon okay so baka kailangan yun yung pambridge doon sa uh, scenario na yun okay yun lang po okay maraming salamat po professor Bolinao um so Miko uh, nakuha mo na lahat yung ano um is there anything else that you'd like to add not so much in your defense, but uh, meron ka pa bang gustong idagdag as far as yung ano, uh, to this conversation? Um, siguro sir, just would like to thank everyone uh, given the, our, uh, our own personal difficulties. Uh, uh, this request was uh, accommodated. So yun lang po, ma'am sirs, maraming maraming salamat po. Okay, thank you Miko. So I guess we will be asking Miko to leave the meeting while uh, we deliberate on uh, what the final decision is as far as your thesis uh, uh, is concerned. So, uh, uh, Ari, sorry. Oh, ba bago ano? Ano, oh. Bilang host po ng meeting, gusto ko lang din po magpasalamat dun sa mga uh, nanood ng stream. Medyo marami-rami. <laughs> medyo trending tayo. May nakita ko up to 30 were watching Alaga. it. Opo. So, maraming pong salamat. Pero, uh, sa, unfortunately, baka hindi na po namin i-broadcast yung mangyayari, i-stream from, from this point. But, uh, si, uh, we will just inform um, uh, si Google's department it. if um, what the, the outcome of, of the defense is. So, maraming okay. pong salamat. So, Miko, we will, I will message you again and, um, para bumalik ka, but uh, the panel needs to deliberate. Thank you, okay. sir. So, Miko, we need to invite you to leave the meeting at this point in time. <laughs>